Good morning, I'm Lieutenant Colonel Chrissy Delcor, Chief of Promotion Board Operations. Today I will discuss how the Selection Board Secretariat Directorate is set up, the roles and responsibilities of each branch, promotion boards, officer responsibilities, and post board actions. So the Secretariat is set up um, with three different divisions. We have Promotion Eligibility Division, who's responsible for verifying eligibility for approximately 9,500 reserve and guard officers annually. They manage PRFs for 100% of the mandatory guard, lieutenant colonel and below boards. This division also um, produces orders for all reserve members. However, they do not cut orders for Air National Guard. Orders are actually done by NGB A1. NGB A1 does all active duty and reserve active status processing for guard um, officers as well. Promotion Board Operations Division. This, is, this division is responsible for building and executing all of the ARC promotion and continuation boards. They prepare and push all of the ARPCM convening and release promotion notification messages. Um, and they update any officer promotion guidance that needs to be updated. Um, boards um, and AFROMs, they build these as well as in the electronic board operating scoring system. And they upload eligible officer records for scoring in EBOS. They manage EBOS operations pre and and post board. Um, they also do senior rater updates, but only for officers that are eligible to meet a promotion board. They prepare and outbrief um, board reports and promotion stats to NGB, Chief of the Reserve of the Air Force, the Assistant Secretary of the Air Force of Manpower and Reserve Affairs, and the Under Secretary of the Air Force. They also prepare and send promotion board scrolls to the Pentagon for SECAF um, and POTUS approval and for our colonels for Senate confirmation. Promotion Policy Division is the reserve of the Air Force OPR for Reserve Officer Personnel Management Act, meaning they ensure compliance with Title 10 and other promotion policies specific to the ARC. This division prepares promotion-related advisories for Board of Correction of Military Records, your BCMRs, and the Evaluation Reports Appeal Board, ERAPS. They also conduct an average of 400 post-board counseling sessions per year, um, they also are responsible for building and managing the special selection boards and special boards for our reserve members. They also assist officers with letters to the board and they review and process roughly 800 letters annually. So our authority for conducting all officer promotion boards is vested in public law. DOD and Air Force policy directives and instructions further guide the process. Listed here are the laws, DODIs, AFPDs, AFIs, and OIs that govern how we run Air National Guard, Lieutenant Colonel, and Major Boards. Additional directives and guidance are also provided by the Secretary of the Air Force through her Memorandum of Instructions, or MOIs. There is additional law and guidance for Air National Guard Colonel Federal Recognition Review Boards. Title 32 of USC Chapter 3 provides guidance on the federal recognition of Air National Guard officers. ANGI 36-2504 outlines specific procedures for federal recognition of promotion in the Air National Guard. And as with all promotion boards conducted, additional directives and guidance are also provided by the Secretary of the Air Force through her MLIs. So here's an overview of the types of boards conducted by the Selection Board Secretariat Directorate at ARPC. Um, our mandatory boards are governed by law. These boards consider all eligible officers in and above the promotion zone. IPZ in the promotion zone signifies the officer is in the zone, and this is their first mandatory board, where APZ is above the primary zone, and this is the officer's second or more board. ARPC executes five mandatory boards per year. However, for promotion to first lieutenant and captain, Eligible officers meet a process and not an actual board, and this process is done twice a year. Position vacancy boards are PV boards. Um, ARPC actually does not conduct these types of boards for the Guard, as these boards are accomplished at the state level. However, a PV board is held to consider exceptionally well-qualified officers for early promotion. Officers must be nominated by their senior rater and must be the sole occupant of a higher graded position. 
Our special selection boards and special boards are boards conducted by law to correct an error. There may be a BCMR ERAB directed, or they can be approved by the ARPC um, PB directorate. These boards are held as necessary in conjunction with mandatory boards. And since ARPC is not responsible again for the, the uh, position vacancy boards for guard, and um, we do not conduct any special boards for ANG. We only do the special selection boards. Um, another board that we do is the selective continuation board. However, at this time, continuation boards are not held for um, ANG officers. We only do these for the Air Reserve officers. But a selective continuation board um, is a board that is held at the Secretary of the Air Force's discretion. These boards are typically held following the 04 or 05 board with the intent to retain twice deferred officers in specific AFSCs or specialty codes. If an officer elects to continue, they are continued for the length of time outlined in the Secretary of the Air Force's um, through her MOI, and it can vary between two to three years. So here you'll see the Guard Selection Board schedule for CY20 and 21. This information is posted on MyPERS website and it's posted annually. As you will see, there are two Air National Guard Colonel Federal Recognition Review Boards. We conduct those twice a year. Um, this year, because of COVID-19, um, AFPC typically holds the Air National Guard GEO Federal Recognition Board. However, um, because of the conflict in the schedule and boards being shifted, we actually held that board this year um, for the Guard and we will continue holding that board for them. So this is a typical timeline um, for the entire promotion board process. Uh, for each board, we start coordinating the eligibility criteria for officers um, beginning about 225 days prior to the board convening. The promotion board is scheduled to be convened for one week. Longer boards will go into Saturdays. And with the new line competitive categories, the six new line competitive categories, um, our bigger boards will last two weeks now. So in the post board phase of the processing, which is your plus seven through 75 days, um, there are some changes. The president has delegated approval authority down to the Secretary of Defense level for Lieutenant Colonel and below promotion boards. But the 06 are colonels. Um, those boards still require presidential approval and Senate confirmation. Once we conduct our outbrief in DC, the length of time to get those um, packages approved varies, but this is just a, um, an overall um, snapshot view of typically how long it takes. So a question we get asked a lot is, um, where can I find information about the upcoming promotion boards? Our answer is always um, go to MyPERS. If you go to MyPERS and select um, Air Reserve and then Officer and Promotion, um, you will have a slew of information out there for you to review. We update this information um, regularly or when changes are necessary. So promotion information is done by rank. So if you click on the appropriate rank for the most current information, you will find um, your ARPCMs, which are, again, your convening notices or your release messages. Um, and then any guidance out there that we currently have for the boards. We also have the board schedule. And then we have pre and post board information and guidance. And then as always at the very bottom of the page, you have your resources, which are your AFIs um, or DOEs. So it's really important um, when we push out the ARPCMs for the convening notice for all eligible officers and the MPFs to review this information. And there's a lot of great information in here. Um, and most of the time, the questions you may have are answered in the ARPCMs. We send a copy of this out four months prior to any board convening. So again, it is important for all officers that are meeting a board or for your servicing MPFs to review this information. So in the ARPCM, um, there are milestones that if, file, if followed will keep everybody on track um, for promotion board due dates. Particularly, we ask everyone to pay attention to the PRF due dates. Um, these dates are um, hard dates, especially for PV noms. Um, but again, for guard, we don't do PV. But Usually we request that you have the PRF due 45 days prior to the board convening. Um, another important date to look at is the last date to update any information in MILPDS. 
and also the letters to the board. The letters to the board are required 10 days prior to the board convening. Um, if you do not meet that deadline, you will not have a letter to the board in your record. So time and grade. Time and grade refers to the number of years required in that grade before you are considered for promotion to the next higher grade. Members meet the board prior to their time and grade requirements, so if promoted, pin on date follows when the time and grade requirements are met. However, a caveat to this is if a senior rater elects to accelerate a promotion, they can do so and you may pin on prior to your um, time and grade. For mandatory boards, major to lieutenant colonel, members will meet the board um, six years time and grade. And if selected and approved for promotion, the pin on date is typically seven years time and grade. The PV boards, um, as you can see here, uh, for majors to lieutenant colonel, the member must have four years time and grade to meet the board. And if selected and approved for promotion, um, they will promote effective the public release date or the date they reach five years time and grade, whichever is later. For the guard members, as you can see here, members can meet a PV board at four, five, or six years time and grade. So Razzle, um, officers must meet um, requirements in order to be eligible for promotion. And one of those requirements is Razzle time. So what is Razzle? The Razzle is the reserve active status list. All reserve officers to include guard are on a Razzle. Um, so you have, you must have been on a Razzle or an active duty list for one year or a combination of these one year prior to the board convening. So if you're coming from active duty straight into the guard and you didn't have a break in service, your time on active duty and the Razzle will count for that one year um, and you will be eligible for the board. You can't have a break in service going from active duty to the reserve um, or, to the, or to the guard. Um, if you do have a break, you have to obtain one full year on the Razzle prior to being eligible for any promotion board. So our PRFs. PRFs are required for the mandatory board um, meeting 04 through 06. There are three types of promotion recommendations um, for the mandatory board, which is your definitely promote, promote, and do not promote. Um, for officers who are meeting um, the captain's board and the major's board, if you are being recommended for a do not promote, APRF will be required. So the biggest change with the, the PRFs is um, we went from nine lines to two lines. This was effective on the CY19 Reserve Colonel Board, which convened 21 October 2019. So we've been using this for almost a year. Um, and again, the biggest change is we went from nine lines to two lines. So the PRF is no longer a summary of the officer's career, but an opportunity for the senior grader to tell the selection board why they should or should not promote an officer. Comments are mandatory um, per AFI 36-2406, table 8.1, line 12. Um, it states that comments are required for all officers on the Razzle. Since again, all of our reserve um, component officers are on a Razzle, comments are mandatory. Another big thing is stratification. So the senior rater um, is the only one who can provide a stratification on the PRS, and they are only allowed up to two stratifications. Your um, senior rater is fixed by policy, so this duty cannot be delegated down to um, anybody else in the chain of command. Whoever the senior rater is assigned to the senior rater ID, um, they must sign your PRF. So here is an example um, of a mandatory board PRF. So as you can see here, the top section is pretty self-explanatory. Um, personal information, grade, passcode. Um, when you get down to section four, which is the promotion recommendation, Comments, again, are mandatory and they must be in bullet format. For a promote PRF, the stratification is going to be in block four. Both stratifications, if the senior rater wants to do that, is going to be in block four. If your senior rater is giving you a DP, which is a definitely promote, that first stratification is going to be in the group size, which is section six. In this example, um, we said two of five of ten. So what does that mean? Um, so the senior rater has awarded a definitely promote, and he's got 10 officers in that competitive category that's meeting the board. 
and he's telling us that this officer is number two of five of those officers that he's awarded a DBE to out of 10 total. So for reserve PRFs, we do not mark the IPZ or APZ. That would be section five in the promotion zone. We leave that blank. Um, what we do require is for the promotion recommendation block to be marked, which is section nine. And again, those three recommendations are definitely promote, promote, or do not promote. So officer's responsibility. Again, if an officer is eligible and they are meeting a promotion board, again, we we highly recommend that they read the ARPCM convening notice. Um, there's a lot of information in there that's going to help you um, and help your leadership stay on track when writing uh, a PRF. Know your date of rank um, because your date of rank is how we determine when officers will meet a board. And when we build our boards, we do so based off the date of rank. Once the board is built, then we do our eligibility checks to make sure you have, you have met the time on the razzle. Um, you don't have a separation date prior to the board or 90 days after the board, and then that you meet the rest of the eligibility criteria. Take a look at your record. When we build the boards in EBOS for scoring, we pull everything out of arms. Uh, we pull your decorations, your OPRs, any kind of training report you have on file, uh, derogatory information that may be filed in your record, all of that is pulled over from arms into EBOS. Now, customers don't have access to the ARM system, but you have access to Prada. Prada is your online record. So you want to go out and you want to check Prada to make sure that you have all of your OPRs and decorations, training reports, any type of mandatory LOE that's been filed. If you are missing that information, it is your responsibility to make sure that it gets updated. Prior to the board, about five months prior to the board, we do a check of your ARMS record and we scrub it against what is reflected in MIL PDS, which is just data. If there's any discrepancies between the information in MIL PDS and ARMS, it will generate a report. And you will get notified that you have an EOSR ready for your review, and it will list any discrepancies that we've identified. However, if you have not received a notification that you have an EOSR to review, again, go to product, look at your record, just make sure it's up to date. Also, we send out your officer pre-selection brief um, to your servicing MPF about 145 days prior to the board convening. The MPF is responsible for sending you your officer pre-selection brief for review, and they typically do this around the 130-day mark. Please, if you have not received it, you need to contact your servicing MPS and request that they send you your officer pre-selection brief. So here's a quick look at Prada. Um, again, this is your online record, and this is what you should be able to see when you go out there. The best advice that I can give you is, is don't wait till the last minute to check Prada. Make sure you're checking it um, annually because you want to make sure um, all of your information is reflected. If a document is in Prada, it will be part of your officer selection record, and it will be visible for the board members um, when they are scoring your record in the EBOS. If you notice that a document is not in Prada, then it will not it will not be part of your officer selection record and the board members will not see that. So again, it is very important for you to review this information and then make sure that you have everything you need in your record. So again, I talked a little bit about the EOSR. Um, this is what it looks like. Officers can access this information um, through VPC. And the member will be notified of what selection board their record is meeting and what errors or discrepancies have been discovered in the EOSR. Um, discrepancies noted during the records review have comments on each and instructor, instructions on how to correct it. This is an online tool um, to help submit your missing documentation, but be advised that this was a one-time data pull and push. So if you update your record, it's not gonna be reflected here. So effective um, October of 2020, the ARC is going to transition to the new line of the Air Force competitive categories for officers meeting the major through colonel promotion boards. And the line competitive category has gone from one to six categories. The six categories allow for a more tailored development path for career fields across the line of the Air Force. The developmental agility achieved in these new categories is critical to an ever-changing world. Um, an officer's core AFSC is what drives what competitive category they will be in. So moving forward, it's very important for eligible officers meeting a promotion board to look at their core flag ID and make sure it's correct. 
Errors with the core flag will result in the officer potentially meeting the board in the wrong competitive category. So your officer pre-selection brief, um, your CSS or servicing MPF should provide you a copy of the ARPCM convening notice along with your OPB approximately 130 days prior to the board convening. For this information, the officer pre-selection brief is the same document that the board members will see. However, when we're in board, we call it something different. Um, we don't call it the officer pre-selection brief, we call it the officer selection brief. Um, but it's the same document. So if there's errors on your officer pre-selection brief, you must correct it. Otherwise, it's going to be wrong when the board members see it. Um, so it's very critical for you to review it and take immediate action to make any corrections if you notice anything wrong. In the ARPCM, it gives you step-by-step -step on who you should contact um, if you find an error on your officer pre-selection brief. So this is the information that is um, contained on your officer pre-selection brief. Uh, one of the new fields that you need to pay attention to again is the core flag in competitive category. Again, you want to make sure your core flag is correct. That drives what competitive category you will be meeting the board in. You also want to make sure that your developmental education is updated. Any kind of aeronautical flying data, board certificates for a medical professional only. On your pre-selection brief, it's going to say no. However, if you have an M or an H prefix um, on your AFSE, we will update that and, sh and show it to say yes when you meet the board. Um, however, when you get your officer pre-selection brief, it's going to say no. For our medical professionals, if you have board certifications that you want added in your record, you must send that to our office for inclusion in your officer selection record. Since this information is typically not contained in your ARMS record, you will have to manually send that to us. Uh, you also want to make sure your decorations, assignment, history, and your participation points are reflected and corrected on your officer pre-selection brief. For academic education, that information is masked until you meet your 06 board. If you have found an error and you did not correct it prior to the board convening, you may not be eligible for an SB or an SSB. However, if you've been actively working to try to correct anything that's that's wrong or any discrepancies in your record and you can prove that, then you may be eligible for an SSB or SB. Um, you'll have to submit for a BCMR or ERAB uh, and if it's approved, then you'll be eligible and approved for a special selection board. So this is what the officer selection brief um, is going to look like. This is what you should receive and this is what you need to be paying attention to. Again, the new, new areas that you need to pay attention to is the core flag ID. Um, and then another area that has been added as of May 2020 is Wounded Warrior. So letters to the board. The Air Force office, um, offers every eligible officer the opportunity to write a letter to the board regarding any matter he or she feels the board should know. The letter must be submitted in good faith and contain accurate information to the best of the officer's knowledge. Again, these are required 10 days prior to the board convening. And they can be electronically signed or they can be wet signed. Once our technicians receive your letter, you will receive confirmation that they have received it. If for any reason the technician finds something in your letter that is not authorized, um, they will send it back to you um, with some feedback and you will need to resubmit it, correct it, in order for it to go into your officer selection record. If you submitted your letter by that 10 day mark um, and we have to send it back for any kind of corrections, we will still accept it because you met the initial deadline. So some things that you cannot put in your letter to the board um, is information prohibited by the Secretary of the Air Force. Um, and you can't mention completing developmental education or enrollment in developmental education or anything about advanced academic education. So once the promotion board results have been publicly released, any officer that was not selected for promotion can request post-board counseling. You must request it through VPC online. So when you request your counseling, our counselors will pull your record as it met the board. They will reconstruct it and they will take a look at it and they will provide you feedback on strengths and weaknesses of your record. What they cannot do is they cannot tell you why the board members voted the way they did because they do not have um, access to that information. And by law, we can't disclose any conversations that were held in board. Um, if you don't have a VPC account, you need to create one. Um, in order to log in and then complete the form online and then submit it and you should 
receive your counseling in approximately four to six weeks. So how can you help? As a member, I'm meeting the board again, read the ARPCM. If you have any questions about the EA ARPCM, go to your servicing MPF and ask. If they can't answer the questions, um, they will typically send us a ticket and we will respond within two days. Uh, know the milestones. Those due dates are pretty important um, and they will help, again, keep everybody online and on track for the promotion board. Review your EOSR or just go to Prada and take a look at your record. Make sure you have all your OPRs, decorations, training ports, etc. Review your officer pre-selection brief. Again, this is very important because this is a document that the board members will see. And so if you find any discrepancies, you want to make sure you take immediate action to fix them. If you're the servicing MPF, please read the ARPCM, follow the directions, communicate with your senior raters, and make sure you're pulling the master eligibility list, which is your MEL, at least once a week. There are ads and deletes that occur and they can occur right up until the board convenes. So it's very important for you to pull these reports and make sure if there's any changes, you communicate that to your senior leadership and your senior raters. Provide the officers with their officer pre-selection brief. If you are having issues pulling any documents, because um, all of this stuff is in AFPROMS, please contact us and we will help walk you through the process. And then also, you guys are the first line for our officers in the field, so if they have questions, make sure you assist them. If you can't, then let us know. Um, send us a ticket through RNT and we will do what we can to help you guys. Thank <laughs> you.